Welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. We're going to go on the airship to go to Lindblom now. We may run into something along the way, which is probably par for the course for games like these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Honestly, I'd be shocked if we ever traveled from one place to another and we didn't encounter anything. Like, when was the last time a plan went uh, went just as expected in a game in a game like this? Like, <laughs> that's boring. <laughs> Yeah. I want to point something out about 9 that sort of sticks out in my mind to me. It's the only Final Fantasy game where it's a big deal that air transit is all over the place and you get direct control of an airship. This is also the only time in the game, though, where, because, we're, I'm jumping the gun a bit here, but we're going to get an overworld shot of us flying in this airship, and you can see other airships flying around you. That's the only time in the game you see something like that. Well, it would, be really, it would be really annoying if you had to, like, worry about about like traffic af accidents while you're oh, doing <laughs> while the you're skyways doing... jammed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like it, it's it's clearly just a cutscene flavor thing that they threw in for that one scene. While you're actually controlling an airship, you don't want to see you don't want to run into other airships. Although I think you can occasionally see airships in the sky over Lindblom while you're in the world map. This okay. I'm not sure whether to laugh or punch it on in the face. Oh, he caught, oh yeah, he caught the feel. He says it was an accident, he swears, but... Yeah. yeah. I think this is the only time in the game that plays this theme, which I love. This is Zidane's theme. This is Zidane's the theme song? Yeah, this... Zidane, Zidane climb the ladder! Yeah. Climb the ladder! <laughs> Air's just moving, buddy! Wait. Yeah, this is Zidane's theme playing right now, and I think this is the only part of the game that happens. What, the... the do 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 yeah. do 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 yeah, I, yeah. I, I wanted to bring up the airship thing, though, because after Final Fantasy IX, well, less so in X, but twelve and thirteen, airships are everywhere. You don't get to control one. It's like the game is taunting you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you get to select a, a location from a list. You get to take passenger ships from one town to another, sure. Yeah, Type-0 is exactly the same way. You don't get to control one. You just take it as a ferry. No. Oh. Yeah, it's like you haven't we haven't been able to really control an airship since the world map disappeared. Well, the, I like the whole how his point first of... thought is wow already. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the whole point of the airship is basically to make world trap ma uh world trap travel a uh, world map travel easier um or at least traditionally that was it, it, its purpose. So, um yeah, but isn't there something a little more exhilarating than controlling the ship yourself getting to that location compared to just picking this, let's go? Y y sort of. Like, it's... I I think that having the quick option... the quick travel feature be... should it should be an option because you either get lost or you just... you, you don't feel like driving all the way over there yourself, but being able to explore <laughs> freely should be an option, yes. It should be like, um... and I apologize, this is a little weird, but, uh, L.A. Noir. <laughs> Uh, L.A. Noir <laughs> lets you drive to a location yourself where you can use a quick travel. Yeah. Yeah. So if uh, airships did that, then I think nobody would be having an issue. Yeah. Because as long as it's an option, uh, then I don't think anybody really ever has any problem with it if it's if it's optional. <laughs> I love this little thing right here. It looks like a treasure chest, but it's actually a part of the ship. <laughs> like, fuck you, <laughs> all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, you know, the, the way they use the dialogue boxes in the, in this game is pretty effective, though. Uh, do you any, know, like, do other Final Fantasy games do, uh, do it in this, in this way, or? Uh, to a certain extent, 7 and 8 did the same thing, but it, it's, it's used with more flair here, partly because of the, the, um, the speech bubble motif, but they also do things like, when Vivi was, was being all sad just now, he spoke in really small fragments, and it, just the placement of the text boxes and the timing of it all made yeah. it seem really depressing. Text boxes are very varied in this game in terms of, it, it, you know, the, the scope of the box itself can give you an implication of how this dialogue is being inflected. Yeah, and that, that, that's, that's the thing that some other JRPGs that came out around this time or even during the PlayStation 2 generation didn't really capitalize on. Like, I love Wild Arms 3 story and characters to pieces, but it, the text box is always just across the bottom of the screen in the traditional position. And, well, yeah, it, you can get some good writing in there, but you're missing out on some presentation points. It also just lets you know who's saying what, so you don't need to have just a name prompt, you can also see where the speech bubble is hovering over. Yeah, that's, you know, it's a, it's a comic book kind of thing. Yeah, exactly like comic book, you're right. 
So, like, when do we get to the point where stuff happens? Well, Soon. Something's happening. Ask and you shall receive, Ted. The ah. ship is now making a right turn! <gasps> you know what You know what Zidane did? He couldn't talk to the captain, Captain, so he just shoved him away and took over the ship. <laughs> it worked. Ah, the right turn! They're in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I get the distinct impression that Black Waltz number three actually wouldn't have attacked if the ship had kept going. <laughs> because, yeah, because his... his He's he's trying to get, get Garnet to the to the capital. Like that's his job. So if it was going yeah. to the capital, he wouldn't need to do anything. Wait, did did Zidane just wiggle his butt at Steiner? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like the hanging from the ceiling by by his tail. Animation. I think that's the only time in the game he does that. It is like using his tail for something. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much just decoration at this point. And now that the ship is turning around, the black mages are actually reacting to something wonderful. Well, they were reacting to Zidane first, and then there's... I guess they sense the waltz coming? Hey, guys. Cut that out. <laughs> Turn the ship around now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> because the, the black mages aren't actually evil, as we'll see very shortly. Um, they're just they're, kind of stupid. Yeah. They're puppets. They're, they're they're very rudimentary puppets, and there's more to there's more to there's more to this that we'll find out when we get to the Black Mage Village later on, which yeah. has very the later on, yeah. best music in the game, absolutely best track in the game. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Any potential drama leaves the area as soon as Brain Scratch Comms enters the scene. <laughs> Existential crisis. <laughs> Sad piano theme. You are supposed to be able to infer that this is emotionally disturbing. <sighs> How do their hats not fall off? <laughs> it's part of their biology. <laughs> Maybe. The hat is actually their hair. What? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and one thing I do like is, is that uh, I think it VV starts this this battle in trance. In trance, yeah, yeah. 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 which they say. Is so I get, I get, I get, yeah. So I get two straight boss battles of VV trance. Yay! Yeah, yeah. There are a couple battles in the game where a character will begin automatically tranced, but it's not used that often. No, but it's it's a nice detail because they specifically mention that trance is based off a state of emotion. Um, oh so great! It, we have to go through a boss battle without our healer. <laughs> Someone has to control the ship, and that guy just blew away all of our ship controllers. Starts the boss battle music early. I like it when Final Fantasy games do that, where they have the the battle theme playing out in the field, and then it then it just doesn't reset when a battle starts. Yeah, it'd be it's a lot um, weirder if it did reset when the battle starts. It's just like. From the top. <laughs> well, that's because now we have CD quality music. Yeah, it's just like some of the tensest moments in Seven were were, were, were parts where um, the, the battle music would just play straight through, like going up the going up the support pillar with the battle theme playing. Going that's exactly down, what I was thinking about. Going yeah. down into the core with Genova's theme playing the whole time. Um, exiting Shinra HQ with the uh, boss music playing in the background. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's really cool when they can find multiple uses for what is originally supposed to be a battle theme. And I got another steepled hat. <laughs> hey, that's mine! <laughs> mine now. <laughs> what are you wearing on your head? That <laughs> You fool. That's my hair! <laughs> so can you, like, that... style it and something? Yeah. Ooh, I, I got a critical. That's damn critical. Fuck yeah. This battle's actually... Not very big deal. <laughs> what, is, what does it mean when he's flying like that? Uh, I, get, I, mean, I know he's preparing for something, but does he receive any, like, evasion bonuses or anything? Uh, um, we're going to find out now if Zidane and uh, Steiner can reach him. No, I was still able to, like, attack and steal. Ooh, I got the one curious. I got, I, got the two, I got the two rare things. Hooray. Uh, what does the, the Curas do? And yes, I'm gonna keep calling it that. <laughs> I do too. I do too. You're not the only one. It's a piece of equipment. It, it, it's chest armor. Yeah. 
I'm not really sure if it has any special attributes, but uh, every piece of equipment is noteworthy in this game for some reason or another. If there's well, let's a rare see. piece of equipment in the game that, that you can steal, it's probably because it's several bosses ahead in terms of when you would when it would show up in stores. Okay. In such case, the Linen Cuirass is the second weakest armor in the game, with the bronze armor being the weakest. It can only be used by Steiner and Freya, provides plus ten defense, plus one magic, and teaches the ability to cover. Ah, it's, it allows you to defend. That's, that, that's a useful enough ability. Um, but I only ever use cover, like, intentionally in Final Fantasy VII when I'm trying to actually level up a certain character's limit breaks. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the Silver Gloves. Hooray! And, and Silver you know, Gloves that, is the last thing, I think. That leads to some really unfitting skill attribution, because I wind up having Eris use cover throughout the entire end of Disc 1, because I want to use Great Gospel, so she's taking all the hits. Well, Black Waltz number three, I got all your shit, so time to wail on you. <laughs> oh, that was easy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Without his silver gloves, he has nothing! Alright. You can end the music now, game. <laughs> Cut the music! Oh, okay. Yeah, it's that post battle low time. Unfortunately, that kind of makes the Black Waltz number three a little unhinged. Yeah. His screws are literally knocked loose. Now he's just insane. His he purpose is only his, his only his only purpose is to kill. I think is what he goes. Yeah, that's all he says now. Yeah, yeah. And now he doesn't even know that he's supposed to be bringing Garnet back to the castle. So that makes him even more dangerous. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I just I feel urges to do things occasionally. <laughs> Ignore me. Now, there are Evil gestures very... riding sky motorcycles. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are apparently very, very small flying craft in this world, uh, but you never actually really see them anywhere, except during a few small scenes. And that's one thing um, I'm going to say Final Fantasy IX is a little weak at, is defining its own in-game rules as far as the airships and stuff go. Where well, everything's powered by mist... Well, yeah, everything's powered by mist, and there's a plot later on where Sid is trying to c create a steam-powered airship. Yeah, a steam-powered airship. Mist um, and steam really aren't that different, guys. <laughs> no, 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 because the mist itself is used as a power source, whereas steam is, is just used for pressure to move machinery. Well, I, and to be I, fair, there's a, difference between Final, there's a difference between our mist and Final Fantasy IX's mist. Okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's, it's basically demon mist from a magic tree. <laughs> Hear me out. This no, is no, a no, serious no. and highly respected video game series, everybody. Um, <laughs> now, well, What's well, the final boss of Valley? A tree. You don't find out the source of the mist until much later on, but if you're traveling around the world map and actually paying attention to it, you might notice occasionally there's something like a brown rock that's really long and elongated sticking out of the ground. They're actually tree roots. Yep. And those are generating the mist. And it's those same tree roots that'll block access to places during the fourth disc, so... The prick! Fuck those tree roots. <laughs> Why is there just a random hat hanging on this? Wow, <laughs> Vivi has excellent balance. It, 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 got caught on a, it got caught on a particularly sharp piece of rock when, when all the mages were being blasted away, and Vivi was sort of mourning them there. Oh. Poor now, I the wanted that hat! The boss battle's not done yet. Well, fuck you too. I'm a party member, I'm way more badass than you are. I could have sworn that that sound effect that played when the ship was crashing was tr taken straight out of the pod race. Oh, it, it's, it's a stock sound effect. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized, we're being chased by a sky canoe. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate of air travel. This is one of my favorite moments, where an expression sells a thousand words. Oh, yeah. Um, what expression? It's right here. The Blackwell rears up. He accidentally nukes his own ship. He realizes that. Oh shit! Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was—he was, he basically had Deadpool eyes there, actually. Yeah, I was about to say it's Deadpool expressions. You don't get that with Vivi because his eyes are perpetually ovals. Yeah. He's perpetually shocked. <laughs> what are you so wide-eyed about? Everything. <laughs> 
Yeah, we it's just all saved so the people wondrous. of the gate. Woo! I feel like I'm six months old seeing new things everywhere. Ah. You're wait. a wizard, Vivi. You're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so is... now, with, now with Black Vault's number three defeated, we're on our way to Lindblom, which we will continue in next time, because there's a lot to do in Lindblom. Oh, really. yeah. Lindblom's the biggest town I mean, in the game. I mean, first we have to go explore Lindblom, and then over in that valley over there is Virtual Metropolis that we got to go explore, so... Wait, what is bigger? Wait, Lindblom is... Yeah, Lindblom's definitely yeah. bigger than Treno. Yeah. Yeah. Treno just has a lot of screens to it. Yeah. 